Good evening, everybody. Hope everyone's doing well. You'll be happy to know I'm just about over the uh, over the cough and the flu from uh, last week, where I was sounding a little bit ropey with Chris. Apologies for that. Uh, hopefully, we don't have the same connective issues that we had uh, last time, but we can get Eric on nice and quickly. So Eric is joining us from the other side of the uh, and he is going to run us through some digital dentures. Uh, we did it before with Sraven from Australia. Don't know why no one in the UK. Straight in. Good man. How are you doing? Hey, tech savvy. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying, I don't know why, but both of our guests that we've had for Digital Dentures have been over in Canada with yourself or down in Australia. I don't know why. It's something we don't seem to be doing too much of in the UK, but maybe we'll, we'll change that tonight. Uh, how are you, my man? I'm doing great. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for joining us because it's for you. It's like three in the afternoon or something, isn't it? So uh, yeah, take, taking some time out of pressing, pressing print on that denture, denture machine to, to come and chat with us. That's great. Um, we've got loads of people joining in already. That's fantastic. Must be all, uh, all your adoring fans. Um, do you want to just give the, the people watching from most of them probably UK and things may not have seen what you're doing. Just give us a little intro about yourself. And I see the denture centers already on as well. You can tell us a little bit about that as well. Yeah, so happy to be here. Thanks, Dr. Rupert. It's, uh, my name is Eric Kukuchka. Uh, I'm a denturist, uh, what you over in the UK would call a CDT. Uh, mm -hmm. Our version is called a DD, a, a Diploma of Denturism or, or a Denturist. Um, so like a CDT, I, I treat patients clinically. Uh, and then, of course, I'm also trained in, in doing the lab work as well. Um, so that's a little bit about, you know, what a denturist is. Um, myself, I've been doing this now 11 years. Um, own and operate two clinics uh, and a digital denture lab um, servicing actually clients all over the world um, doing digital dentures, um, mostly prosthodontist and some general dentists as well. Um, and then have an online education platform that we developed during the COVID-19 pandemic where we have mm -hmm. hundreds of uh, training videos to teach uh, clinicians and technicians how to be better at removable, whether it's analog or digital. I mean, the, the, the platform, of course, is very digital focused um, from a scanning and a technical perspective, but the clinical foundation is really based on techniques and principles of foundation of removable prosthodontics that have been instilled for 50 plus years. And of course, other things with the Abbey technique and with SEMCD and those types of things. But <clears throat> really, the, the platform was a way that when the pandemic, we couldn't lecture anywhere or yeah. you couldn't have people here for courses it was you know hey let's build this online and you know people were webinared out but um we have like i think clients in like 39 different countries that uh subscribe to our our, our program of videos um there's over 100 different videos on the site from anything as easy as taking an alginate impression with accident to intraoral scanning um and anything and everything in between wax rim centric trays gothic arch tracings and all all different types of things. So really there was that. And um, yeah, I'm on the three shape advisory board. Um, I also speak for Ivoclar. I'm part of their R and D team as well, working with them. Um, yeah. A lot of really exciting things going on over here. Ah, fantastic. And I guess the, uh, the digital nature of it, having, as you say, clients from all around the world, that's actually going to help or be possible because of, the digital stuff if you're only having to send a scan of an impression or send a scan of a patient that's going to save four days of it traveling halfway around the world um, and is it a thing that we'll probably go into it later but is it things where you can design everything and have it milled in their own country locally and stuff like that you, you definitely could do that um, those aren't the type of clients we work with um, mm -hmm. for us it's we receive the scans now mostly like the try-ins so they have they all have their own printer so we'll design it They'll print the STL on their end, and then we'll mill, characterize, finalize a final a restoration, mm -hmm. and then and then send that out. Yeah, that that was something we talked about with uh, with Straven, which was great, was that you can sort of make this really quick sort of try in essentially, which you can then alter and rescan and done. It's it's so simple, isn't it, from that point of view? So, yeah. uh, I mean, let's jump into it. I mean, for you, you said what 11, 11 years doing this okay. kind of stuff. Is that is that digital? Where did it start for you? How did you get into the digital dentures? Great, great question. So digital has been from <laughs> 2000, since 2014. Um, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll never forget. I, I, um, I was at Ivoclar for um, just a KOL update and 
they brought me into this like private room like I want to show you something and you know they went through the slides and it was the whole BPS workflow but it was digital you know they showed the the nathometer CAD and then you mm -hmm. know the the digital monoblock try-in and then the carded teeth fused into the milled base and just said you know would you be interested in working on this project and I said just tell me when where who what how <laughs> right like I'm in so um, so I've been working with with Ivoclar in three shades um, since 2014 um, on this this digital journey and it's been really interesting to see where things started and where they are today uh, and where they're going tomorrow um, yeah. you know you look back then at, at which is still a valid workflow today to have manufacturers carded teeth bonded to a, to a milled base and I think it's often an overlooked workflow you know, I think you hear yourself as well, Dr. Rupert, people talking like, well, oh, digital dentures aren't as aesthetic as, as my analog dentures. Well, you don't have to use milled teeth or printed teeth. You can use mm -hmm. carded teeth. You know, there's workflows where you could print the base and use carded teeth, or you can mill the base and use carded teeth. You know, there's, there's a lot of ways to still have that artistry, you know, of a, of a manufactured tooth, which no one can argue that it is the most aesthetic and most beautiful artificial tooth um in the world i mean mm. you can't argue that you know the fenaris or the sdcl and they're just absolutely beautiful with the incisal translucency and the layering and, and the material chemical compositions and but you know when you look at efficiency predictability effectiveness you know milling an arch of teeth and having that freedom of free forming the shapes of the teeth and the occlusion and a monolithic denture and you know a monolithic denture is twice as strong from a Newton centimeters force in an instrument study that was done showed that midline fracture on a carded uh, manufacturer's tooth bonded to a milled base fractured at 32 Newton centimeters of force and a full arch monolithic, I think it was 64, 65. So, you know, there's, there's pros and cons to, mm. to both kind of, kind of workflows, but it's just been interesting to see where it all started and, you know, where it's going today. And I think it's it's interesting that you say there that you can be very much sort of mix and match whether it's and doing certain bits digitally, certain bits analog. And I, I mean, I'm with you completely on the Fenaris Fenaris teeth. I mean, that's what we've used on the last couple of cases that I've been sharing, or most of our cases, and they are they're fab, aren't they? But I think the interesting thing, and I know we're going to get into it because we were, I, you know, I know I sort of know your flows, and we were chatting before, but and it's something that me and my technician looking into is how can we integrate can we do things fully digitally can we do everything analog and do a digital flow side by side or you know do i just take an impression can i scan it and send the file because there's there's a one as we said in the other live there's that degree of if you take taken a great impression like if we're talking you know some cd or, or you know you've got a nice suction up a denture impression that you're not necessarily going to reliably duplicate that in a cast, right? But by scanning it, in theory, your your you know, accuracy of that actual fitting surface of that impression should be higher, which hopefully would mean better results, right? Yeah, I mean, you're talking micrometric precision, right? You don't have any dimensional stability change in, in, of, the, of the material, right? And, and also polymerization shrinkage of uh, even with eyeball base, which is by far the absolute best uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. conventional processing system in the world. And in, in my humble opinion, the reduced polymerization shrinkage and residual monomer content. But um, when you look at milling and we're actually doing a study right now, comparing uh, conventional milling and printing and just showing the global accuracy difference between all the different uh, methodologies of, of manufacturing. But I mean, there was already a study done at the university of Loma Linda that proved that milled, PMMA renders the highest trueness and accuracy over fluid resin, press and pack, and IVO base injection. And that's because wow. you could say what you see is what you get. It was uh, Dr. Baba, Goodacre, and a few others that did the study. Um, it was published in the JPD, I think, in 17 or 18. Um, but it, 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 it showed the most trueness and accuracy based on the initial impression surface and overlaid in, in geomagic software milled pmma rendered the, the most accurate yeah so in terms of your sort of your workflows then what's the majority you're doing are you scanning 
And let's let's talk completes for argument's sake for the moment. Yeah. Are you scanning indentious arches? Are you conventionally imp impressions scanning? Because as you say, you can immediately scan that impression. You haven't got to worry about it sitting on the on the you know the the radiator in the car on the way to the lab, whatever. You can scan it. Yeah. So how do you like to do most of your cases? I know it won't be one size fits all. Yeah, and I think it's a great question. And and just to to, to preamble this is. I think every case is unique to the patient that presents. And I think often we as clinicians actually may overlook the existing situation too much and just be automatic to say, okay, I'm taking alginates, you know, or, or, you know, I'm doing a reference denture. I already decided without, you know, actually sitting down and understanding what the wants and needs are really doing a good clinical evaluation of ridge form, vestibular depth, presence of sublingual spongy tissue, the keratinized tissue on the rectumor pads, do they have a shallow or deep labial vest? You know, all those factors that really come into play of examining the edentulous patient, right? And, and I think, you know, can we take a beautiful, you know, SEM CD uh, frame cutback lower alginate impression to start? Yep. But maybe in some instances using the existing denture and still following closed mouth functional final impression methodology might be good. Because if mm -hmm. this patient comes in and says, I love my denture. I just want whiter teeth. Are you going to change too much? Are you going to, you know, throw all that information out the window and, and ignore that. Right. So I think, you know, to say what's the majority of my workflows, I would say that the, the, the vast majority will put into three categories. So patient comes in with no existing situation, completely edentulous that for me and, in, in I would say 90% of cases is going to be upper and lower preliminary impressions, a centric tray, followed mm -hmm. by a gothic arch tracing with closed mouth function. So SEM CD case. So closed mouth functional final impressions inside the, inside the nathometers, and then a functional try-in and then a delivery. Now, <clears throat> what we've done in some instances, let's say it's a social economical case where they're not, um, you know, contributing as much funds to really support that, that, that workflow, we do a direct to try in. So what we'll actually do is upper and lower alginates, centric tray, we'll do video gauges, papillometers, and then we'll go from there using anatomical and physiological landmarks to set our mm -hmm. teeth within the confines and go right to a try in, take a wash impression in the try in and a, and a centric relation verification, and then go to finish. You know, so that's also a really nice <clears throat> workflow. And then the other would be a reference denture, um, would be, and we do, we do it quite often, actually, as long as the denture's within 75 to 80% of what I call within normal limits of border extensions, repeatable centric relation, not acquired, right? Repeatable, what we deem as, you know, physiologically unstrained, repeatable position, um, mm -hmm. and not overextended, not underextended, just within normal limits. And the way we've actually been doing these reference dentures as of late is we will actually scan the existing denture and then we'll 3D print it in white. So in this methodology, we now have the opportunity to grind on the pressure points, grind on the overextensions, um, really put tray adhesive and not worry about having to remove that afterwards, right? So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think you know, we call it the 360 reference and, and really you could put an impression gap inside of that if you wanted to, right? So, because we know, you know, you don't want to disrupt the patient's existing denture. Does taking impressions inside an existing denture like this one here, you know, does it, does it work extremely well? Yes, you could see the nice beautiful borders of a monophase post dam, which we can talk about with that technique, you know, and there's no overextension, no pressure areas. Now, again, that's because this patient denture was within normal limits and we're able to do closed mouth functional finals. But if it was really overextended and mm -hmm. you really couldn't get that obicularis oris muscle active because it's continuously being caught up from an overextended flange, then how good is your final result going to be, right? So I think when you're looking at reference denture as a particular workflow, I think you have to evaluate the existing situation in its, in its entirety. And I, I think that's a, that reference denture, as you say there, that case, that's sort of a really uh, sort of 
good indication for doing that where, as you say, you don't necessarily want to go hacking away at those flanges because that patient might have to go away with that denture still for quite a long time before you can get it sorted. So if you can just quickly scan it and, and duplicate it for the, you know, whether it's the next appointment or later that day or whatever it is, I don't know what the, the time scale is like, but, and then you've got free reign, right? To do whatever you want. You can alter even maybe some little occlusal bits and stuff like that as well, without thinking that you've completely wrecked everything. So definitely a, a big plus on that. So it sounds like the majority is analog. As you said, in it, at the very start, you're still doing your, old school prosthodontics, all of that. Much scanning of edentious arches, still yeah. don't trust it. What do you so think? It's absolutely possible. And I think from an entry point perspective as well, we, we do it. Um, because again, I mean, material based impression, it, it still costs money, you know, and, and you can easily scan this material based impression in a minute and a half or less. It, it, that's mm -hmm. not the issue. Um, I'm very impressed with where intraoral scanning technology is today. From um, when we talk about edentulous intraoral scanning, and again, there's lots of publications that prove the accuracy and trueness of iOS scanning versus mucocompressive impressions and comparing mm -hmm. the mucostatic intraoral environment and showing accuracy and trueness. Dr. LaRusso has so many um, published studies on that, which, which proves the accuracy and trueness of the scan to the final restoration. My challenge, and we're talking about from a complete removable prosthetic situation, not an immediate denture. We're saying patient comes in wanting to do complete upper and lower dentures. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's from my ABA training and certification <clears throat> mindset, but unless you have a closed mouth functional final impression, which as you know, the material-based impression is being dispersed under the patient's occlusal forces and the borders are being sealed under the neuromuscular activity, as is the lingual extensions, right? Mm -hmm. Sublingual tissue, retromyelohyoid flosses, all those factors that come into play to create the seal. Because we know we can achieve suction effectiveness even on a non-conducive, severely atrophic maxilla, right? Why? because it's the seal of the peripheral borders and the 360 seal per se of the denture base confines is what truly creates the suction effectiveness and maximizes retention and stability. Mm -hmm. So the challenge of <clears throat> doing an iOS scan on a patient like that, you will have accuracy and trueness and it may be stable and maybe somewhat retentive, but the moment at which, and I'm talking a severely atrophic non-conducive palate situation, once that patient starts to exercise neuromuscular activity, it's over. Because yeah, there's no functionality of what you've done. You're creating and following the mucogingival fold arbitrarily, mm -hmm. for lack of better words, in the software, and it's creating a uniform role, right? It'd be no different than finishing on an alginate. However, an alginate's mucocompressive as opposed to mucostatic, but but the point of the matter is, and I'm not here to argue intraoral scanning versus material-based impressions, but when you look at the physiology of how the oral cavity works with a complete removable prosthetic, it requires suction effectiveness from a border seal and creating that cohesive relationship between the denture base and the saliva. And mm -hmm. it, it's, it's just where it lies today um, because we know that is no activity of, of that patient under function. And that's why, that's why SEMCD dentures work so well. And that's why reference dentures work so well because they're being conducted in a closed mouth functional state. And I think it's so often overlooked. And I think that, you know, even when we look at conventional border molding with compound and I'm not besmirching the technique, but it is a pressure, human pressure loaded impression. We are utilizing our forces to mm -hmm. compress those soft tissues and we're taking our i have washed my hands and we're taking <laughs> our finger and we're pulling on the lift and we're pulling here and we're doing all this stuff the patient doesn't do this when they eat they do this yeah yeah right uh, that's always my argument with it as well and even that on the the muscles in function uh, a muscle working is going to get shorter and fatter a muscle that you've pulled is going to get longer and longer. thinner. So your, your, your vestibule is completely the wrong shape, right? So, so I think, yeah, the, maybe you're saying there that 
you, you can maybe do the initial scan with the scanner, but you're still going to want to have a, whether it's in the try-in, whether it's in that sort of two-step that you said, yeah. or whether you're doing a, a conventional as you've done. You're but, in a custom tray if you want, whatever. Yeah. You know, here's but a, it's, it's this part of the work. Yeah, iOS scan, and then we just design a custom tray in like five minutes, and yeah, and you can do that. You know, what's nice is if you're doing um, over dentures, you know, and if you like to do a, a master cast, you know, you can design a uniform block out relief for the impression copings, and you can do a lot of really nice stuff. Yeah, it's a bit more maybe control than a, than a conventional stuff. So yeah, you're still saying though that you, we're not quite there in terms of definitive, definitive impressions going to be. With I, I think that to, to say, Dr. Rupert, you know, to say, is it there? Absolutely. You can do it today. You can do it years ago. It's, is it to the same standard in my humble opinion of a closed mouth functional final impression? No, you're not comparing the apples to apples, but is it maybe better than a, with all due respect, a dental assistant or, or a hygienist just taking an alginate or, or the dentist for that matter? You know, maybe, you know, I would say it probably does render more accuracy and trueness than some of some or most of the alginates that are being done on a daily basis. So I don't, again, I'm not besmirching it because I use trios all day, every day. Um, but again, for me and my practice, from where does the, the restoration finish? it finishes with a closed mouth functional final impression, whether it's done in the try-in or it's done mm -hmm. as a reference denture, but there's going to always be some sort of function, closed mouth functional final impression that's dictating the neuromuscular activity. And are you all, always scanning that impression? Do you ever cast up? Always no. scan it. Yeah. 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 Fine. So interesting. Obviously you're there saying always trios. I know because you've worked with them and whatnot, but you know, my practice, I've only got an itero. So if you want to have words with them, sort me out. Um, but um, that's where the itero falls down. Soft tissue that we were chatting before we came on, I'm doing a, or hopefully I'm doing a very a complete, a, immediate complete, and we'll get on to immediates in a second, because I know that's sort of the other sort of caveat we want to look at. But, you know, it was even just the indenture, you know, lower, lower left, five, five, six, seven, eight were missing. I could get to a round where, I don't know, halfway, halfway down the six, somewhere like that. And then it stopped because it couldn't see a tooth anymore. And it's just going, no, no. Yeah, you can turn off the AI, the AI that cleans it all up, but then you end up with tongue and all sorts. So has the Trios got a better system for it? It, ha it has an, a dent doesn't have an edentulous sort of impression version? It does. So two years ago, we started... When I say we, when I worked with the three k <laughs> development team, uh, optimized digital denture workflow. So, so the idea was, how do we create optimized scan strategies, scan paths, and and scanning algorithms for impression scanning, intraoral scanning, and then copy denture scanning. So, really being able to recognize that this is a shiny piece of plastic, right? Mm -hmm. And how do we get global mm -hmm. accuracy from a cameo surface with teeth? to an intaglio surface and wrapping everything around and creating this globally accurate three dimensional device. How do we create global accuracy of a material based in, in, in impression? And then when you look at intraoral scanning and they actually just launched the newest uh, AI 2.0 um, in June, which really has utilized hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of data from intraoral scans and i mean when you look at the accuracy and trueness and depth and detail of what this scanner is capable of from an edentulous intraoral perspective it's it's unbelievable um and and the the speed i mean i could scan an upper edentulous arch in under a minute lower in a minute and a half and it just flies through and i think that that was a really big part of the development of Trios was making it user friendly for dentures. You know, Crown mm -hmm. and Bridge and Implant, it's always been there, but the last two years of, of development and, and especially the last year, it's really been on, on focused on dentures and intraoral scanning, um, impression scanning. So the, the goal was irrespective of what you want to scan, we want to have an algorithm and a scan strategy for that. Mm -hmm. So is there, is there, you say they're sort of scan path and things. So for like the edentulous, 
the dentures and things is maybe going to be a step forward from, but for scanning and a dentureless arch, is there a specific within the software that sort of guides you? It's a yeah. sort of, yeah. yeah so, so is that so down the ridges first or? So with the upper, it's, it's a basically you start the tuberosity, bring it across the, the, the ridge all the way across the other tuberosity. Then you bring it anteriorly, do the palatal sweep and then bring it across the buckles. And then for the lower, you'll, you'll start on the kind of the center of the ridge, bring it through the lingual side and then do the others and then actually stop, let it render, bring it back across the other side, the lingual, and then finish off with the buckle. Now you could always, you could do it in one pass and you can do all that, but sometimes, you know, you have so much data and information, you have to let it process and render and, and collect itself because so much data trying to collect and, and want to build and build and build and build and almost forgets where you started and where you're ending. So just a tip or trick for anybody that's doing intraoral scanning, even when you're scanning in a material-based impression, just get a vast majority and then just stop and let it just calculate, process, render, and then finish off the scanning. And fill, in, fill in the blanks. Yep. Yeah. And that may be where actually yeah, the iTero doesn't have a system for it yet. But maybe that's where I'm just sat there for four hours going, come on, come on, come on. Uh, Sarawi, yes, this will be saved. You'll be on Instagram TV. Uh, so maybe that's the thing. But, I mean, let's go on to immediate. So say for that case, um, Perio case, it's a clearance. It was kindly referred by a lovely a lovely chap on, on here who sent it to me, so thank you. I uh, don't know if he's on. Um, but mobile teeth, upper and lower, loads of them. Bridge hanging down. There's no way I'm taking a conventional impression. Um, so for that, I've just done scans. I've said, look, this is as good as it's going to get. Now, when I spoke to my technician, with the limitations that I've got, I've said to him, and it's a different technician I normally do for my digital ones, but I said, that just whatever you see as, as pink, as borders, just make that. Just make those extensions. Um, we might have lost Eric. Uh, getting too exciting here. Um, let's just see if we'll get back on. But essentially, I said, let's just make these extensions. <clears throat> And, uh, and take it from there. And um, I'm then probably going to do a, whether it's like an impression with a, a visca gel or whether it's a relining impression or something like that. Um, but then we're going to remake it essentially as it always is with immediates. Um, oh, it looks like we've lost him. Let's just see if we can get him back on. Hope everyone's still there. Let's see if we can get her back on. Sorry about this guys. We thought we'd done okay after uh, last week's connection problem. So, hey. I was so excited I got lost. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's what happened. Where did I lose you? Uh, no, no, I, I can hear you. I just, for some reason, it was lost. So, yeah. So, it essentially, makes, I just makes... said to him, whatever's pink, just make it. And then I'm going to cut it all back. And I'm probably going to do like a soft liner initially um, just to get him through the first, you know, couple of weeks. Um, and then the plan, I was just going to reline it and just send it because the local lab, I'm just going to reline it and send it down and take the hit on it. Cause that's sort of our limitation for something like that. I mean, it's quite an extreme case. I mean, those, um, I said, I've, I've shared a couple of little, little flipper anterior dentures that I've done and that worked really well. Uh, hi Dr. Noor, it's uh, digital dentures that we're chatting through. Um, so we, um, those, uh, yeah, those sort of little flipper ones, they worked really well. Um, that was just scanning a few anterior teeth out. The only adjustment I had to make, labial freedom, because again, that's been pulled out of the way. But apart from that, that was fine. I'd get a little bit itchy about, as you say, sort of posterior bits. And, but you just got to say it's going to be imperfect, right? How, how is it for you with immediates? Yeah, so I think, you know, one thing we, got, we, we should always remember and understand is with an immediate, at least if, <clears throat> for you as the clinician, you can take a, you can do a tissue conditioner right at time of surgery, which I think, you know, there's an, there's a big advantage to that, you know, being able to do that right then and there at time of surgery to uh, be able to, to place a co-soft or a Lang's immediate or wh whichever mm -hmm. methodology or material that, that you use. But for, from us, for, for me, you know, I would say pretty much exclusively my immediates are done with intraoral scan and mm -hmm. I'm actually doing a clinical trial right now. We've got 50 cases that were all done with immediates, um, all wow. done on trios, uh, all mill dentures. And right now, the early numbers, average post-operative adjustments is 1.47. Wow. 
adjustments and you're talking, you know, some cases with 14 extractions or as many as 28 extractions, if it's a full full. And I think there's a lot to be said as multiple, there's a multitude of factors, excuse me, that, that come into to play with this, you know, so now I'm going to go a little bit backwards comparing mucostatic and mucocompressive, but when you can capture the mucostatic situation of that those that dentition excuse me the terminal dentition that may be slightly mobile and you're not over compressing all of the soft tissues in the surrounding areas and how you're capturing that gingiva that's surrounding the cervical margins of those teeth are not being over compressed or pressured right mm -hmm. it really does render a minimal amount of post-operative adjustments as does the digitally recorded occlusion we're not taking two stone models and hand articulating them maybe it's this way maybe it's no no i know i got it and we draw our line with a pencil and yep the two cuspids line up so i know i'm good right and then when we're digitally manufacturing these whether you're milling it or printing it right you are creating something with micrometric precision and that's rendering less post-operative adjustments and i think when you take all these factors into play from the the mucostatic impression that's an undisturbed overall situation the digitally recorded occlusion, and then the digitally designed occlusion, digitally fabricated and manufactured prosthesis, that's what's allowing to render less post-operative adjustments. And, and also from a patient acceptance perspective, look at uniform thickness. So you're delivering an immediate denture. It's going to be the first time this patient wears a removable prosthesis. Mm -hmm. And there are some extremely, there's hundreds and th thousands of talented removable technicians all the world, which unfortunately it's dissipating, you know, the lack of talent that's, that's around anymore in, in removable. Um, but to create a perfectly 2.5 millimeter uniform thickness following the perfect concavity of the palatal vault and the buccal borders, that comfort to a patient receiving an immediate denture, it's, it's really powerful. Mm. So you're getting even more. So, so the cases that I've done as well, they've been, uh, they're still, um, they're still being conventionally, conventionally made. So it's just duplicating that or whatever. The the other thing I was I, with this, I was saying, well, I was saying to Eric before we came on about this immediate is this bridge is like hanging down. And what I didn't think is because it's so uncompressive, the bridge was hanging down. What I should have done was put a finger under it to scan it because when he occluded, the bridge went like that, and then. It, the uh, the jaw edge doesn't quite know what it's doing, but we'll work it out. Um, but what my technician did comment on was that this guy's had a lot of perio, obviously, with the mobility of all these teeth. And the embrasure spaces were so clear, so nice. Whereas you're putting, you know, a dodgy algae in there and you're worried about these teeth coming out. The embrasures are all over the place. And that, as you say, that ridge form, you're just not going to have that kind of accuracy. So I think definitely that's a, that's a big plus there. So I'm quite keen to see how, how that develops. Um, Raphael Sandrick says you're the top beast. Um, <laughs> and the white chapel dentist says, wow, I'm assuming that's that 1.47, which are crazy, crazy numbers. So in terms of the immediates, then, if you're doing them fully digital, say it is a, the clearance case, is that part of the what's the software behind it all is it within trios is it into sort of a, a cad design you're then taking teeth off how does that work yep so we'll basically we'll scan it with trios mm -hmm. um uh in, in many instances we'll do a face scan with bellis uh, yep. which you can align into the software we always another thing too we use smile design from a patient excitement perspective discussing treatment with the patient shade size shapes molds all those types of things and then now we take all that information and that's sent into three shape dental system. And then mm -hmm. we virtually can extract the teeth um, inside of the, the dental system software. And then we have the ability to merge and visualize the existing situation on and off from, from a slider. So when you're, when you're aligning or designing your, your digital occlusion or your setup, you have the ability to bring in the, the initial situation i'm just trying to see if i can um, pull one up on a, mm -hmm. a slide here um, just to kind of show that yeah here we go so i don't know if we can flip this around yeah it should come up there yeah so oh, you know yeah, I've seen this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
smile design, you know, here's the intraoral scans. Yeah, see, my eye terror is not going to get that level of detail on the on the free end in the in the in the mandible. It's not going to happen. <laughs> and then here, you know, you can see the the new proposed situation, and, mm -hmm. and you always will have that opportunity to see the um, the existing situation, the new proposal, so you can make sure that you know you're aligning the teeth labially properly and sizely and and everything. So I think it it, it makes a really big difference and. Um, in, in your in your case planning and you can get those types of, of, of results. And this was what we were talking about earlier, you know, so mm -hmm. there's the 360 printed. So replica of, of his immediate transitional. So this was the interim transitional. And then we, we 360 scan, which you can see here, that's, you know, you can see the tissue conditioner and that's the 360 scan of the existing. We 3d print that. And then we use that to take the closed mouth functional finals. And mm -hmm. then we scan that information. And then we, from there, we'll deliver a um, functional try-in. Um, so you can see here now, you'll have all that information that you can make better. So maybe vertical is off, or maybe you needed more lip support, or maybe less lip support, or in size or length. Or, but having all that information there for you, it's, it's powerful. You know, and then you'll do your functional try in and then we'll we'll deliver a final restoration from there so um but yeah for the immediate i think having that initial situation the opportunity to bring that in and out from a visualization is is incredible probably quite good from a patient communication point of view as well they can sort of see that and check are you able to reverse engineer it into the face scans or photos or anything like that? yeah yep. yeah yeah yep. that's really think... good so you can check that there patient communication, but also clinician and technician communication, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, you and I could hop on a team viewer and I can say, do you like the position of the wall? Show me the original teeth. Yep, the original teeth are right here. Oh, I see how you lengthen that central a little bit. Perfect. That's exactly what I was thinking, you know, and being able to do that, you know, across the world, you know, just yeah, over yeah. on a quick call, you know, it's. And within that software, when you're designing, you've got you've got sort of the control to be able to move bits around, as you say there, are you able to sort of upload certain molds and things like that when it comes to milling and yeah. So then you go and can you tweak those individual T I guess you can, right? You've got sort of free range almost. Yeah. So you can, you can morph shape. Um, I have a design up right here. I'll just do one just real quick. So let's say this is a Fenaris um, mold here. But what we can do is you could morph and scale the the length. Mm -hmm. You know, you could do the width. You could rotate. You could you could come on the cingulums, and if you wanted to thicken the cingulums of the teeth, excuse me, so you can make it thicker. You can do all sorts of things, especially wow, if it's an implant so case. much control. Right, and you want to have much more thickness around those implant attachments. You can mm -hmm. make the clinical crowns thicker. You can adjust, so you can make your own occlusion. So, you know, basically, let's just say you wanted more occlusal contact in this area, then you can morph the, the tooth up and, and create more contact or less. You know, if you want to the opposing arch, it just, you can really create ideal crossbite occlusion or cl class one occlusion regardless of which type of occlusion you're going for, but you can now really morph and shape and you create your own molds, really. Mm -hmm. you, you create and design your, your own occlusion. And I think, I think that's something really powerful, you know, yeah. especially in single arch uh, removable to be able to do that. And to answer your question about the molds, you know, there's, there's lots of molds. Oh, not good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Fenaris, the SDCL, SPE, Blue Line, um, all those are available. So you can you could pick a an S seventy one, but if you think the lateral's too short from the clinical crown perspective, which I do, I think the laterals <laughs> on the S seventy series are a little stubby. Um, so you can lengthen that lateral, you know, and make it whatever size and shape and position. Why don't I throw one? Let me just throw an upper anterior here on just quickly. To, uh, to just show you that from an upper anterior perspective. 
And I think it's really, really neat to show that. And this is an immediate I'm actually mm -hmm. doing right now. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, you know, here's your, here's your initial proposal of the mold, right? But if I, and the green lines that you see here, that's where the mar the gingival margin is going to come in. So if I wanted to make that lateral, you know, longer so that my gingival margin would coincide here, or maybe I want the central a little bit longer, you can morph and shape it any way. Or if you find, you know what, it's a little too round on that cusp t or incisal edge, I'm going to, you know, square that off or whatever. You can do anything and everything. You can, you can broaden interproximal, try and do this one handed, but yeah, you can really <laughs> do anything and everything to the, to the shape and the morphology. And I think that's where I call it limitless, um, limitless opportunities. Yeah. Um, oh, Mike, thanks for letting dentists know we're talking digital dentures. I really should put the title in at the top, but I never did. <laughs> um, so, I mean, the other, the I guess the next piece of the puzzle is going to be, you've designed it like that. Obviously, if you're mixing teeth around and things like that, you're not getting them off. You're not doing your base and then uh, attaching them in. You're either printing or milling. So yeah. differences is there is one that you prefer? Yeah. So interesting enough, I mean, been doing this since 2014, started with milling. And <clears throat> as I mentioned, it's interesting to see where, where this has Co come and gone and where it's going and mm -hmm. you know still myself personally for for what works for me in my clinical practice here and also for for our clients that we work with all over the world is milling is is still today in my opinion the most biocompatible um biological repairable aesthetic uh strong you know material now there's some really impressive um 3D printing technology that that's that's coming out that's already come out. Uh, some stuff was just launched actually in the last few weeks. There's now nano ceramics being printed, um, you know, high impact denture based materials being printed, and um, I think that it's it should not be overlooked. Um, and I think it's really exciting to see where things are going. I think when you look at um, from for us from an automation standpoint, just to talk about milling. When you look at you know, the Ivotion denture where out mm -hmm. in this one piece bicolored disc, so you have your pink material and your, your white material in the same disc. And I'll show that during, um, I can show that on the computer how this geometry works. But out of there, you know, to get a one piece monolithic denture where you can hardly even you can't see the delineation between the white and the pink you know so if you think about that from an automation standpoint one dent one disc goes in the machine and one denture comes out and you know here's a kind of final polished version of it and with the after can you still do all of the you know composite add-ons and the same stuff next go because yeah. it's, it's pmma you just do the same yeah. This this Ivotion material or, or the Ivotion base, which is where you mill the base, and then you mill the teeth separately and bond those together. This is Ivo base material. Mm -hmm. It actually used to be it's called Ivotion base now, but it used to be called Ivo base CAD. So the same um, processing methodology is is done in, with these discs um, for, for that. Now you know you look at a printed denture, and here's here's a printed denture. This is uh, Sprint Rays. Um, high impact material. Uh, it's a new tooth material called called On X. Um, it's actually a nano ceramic. So, you know, everybody says, "Oh, you don't talk about printing much," and we do print. We have four printers. <laughs> We're very versed in the technology, um, and and excited to see where things are going. Um, and I and I think that there's a place for everything in the market. And I think no different than restorative dentistry. Not every single restorative tooth is going to be Emax, or is it going to be FCZ or is it going to be PFM or is it going to be gold? You know, mm -hmm. I think that every case and every indication requires proper treatment planning and decision-making based on the material sciences. Um, but <clears throat> for me, when we look at what is, uh, in my opinion, the, the best, absolute best quality uh, still today is, is milled PMMA, but super excited to see where all these other materials are going to go. 
I mean, that's it's a really good point because we don't think twice about having you know four, five, six different materials to to, to use for crowns. Um, we just had a question from uh, Robson Resende. They're saying polishing procedures are they the same as yep. your yeah? Because you say it's 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 either base or yeah or whatnot. Yep, um, you said main material. for you, the milling is, is the one that you go for. And you said there you've got separate pink and white or you've got the Ive Ocean. Do you have a preference yeah. on that? So the when we look at the two steps, so the Ive Ocean is a monolithic, monochromatic PMMA material. So it's not polychromatic. So you don't have the incisal translucency and the, the dent mm -hmm. in layers when you're looking for the optimal aesthetic milled monolithic solution, that's the, um, the Ivotion Dent Multi. So this is actually a really unique processing methodology that's done with this weight. Uh, it might be hard to see, but you see the pearls. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the way that the disc is layered with the incisal and, and uh, enamel and dentin is actually through all these little pearls. So you don't actually see a parallel line going through this this disc is that every part of that layer is actually done in these these pearls all the way through so you'll never see like when the patient's smiling you wouldn't see a line of of incisal it's just yeah, a, yeah. so this is called gradient technology or gradient translucency so to get the highest highest aesthetic it would be the the multi but if you're looking mm -hmm. for you know the optimized strength you're going to go with an eye yeah. denture yeah, because you, 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 there's always going to be some issue with the join between there, right? Compared to it being a monolith piece. I mean, if, I if hopefully everyone's going to be following me after this, but um, your story every day is you know, <laughs> the mills going away and there's this and this and this. So, like, yeah, how many of these sort of cases are you getting through? Is it literally just these mills going all the time? H hundreds. I mean, we probably mill two, three hundred dentures a month. So between yeah. what we what we treat in our practices. So our two clinical locations and then <clears throat> what we're doing with our clients all around the world. Um, yeah, I would say probably anywhere, but some months, 300, 350 discs going yeah. through that mill. So you've seen, you've seen plenty of them. So the, the guy to ask on this, uh, dentistry. Yeah, this will be updated. It'll be on my page, uh, this evening after this on Instagram TV. Um, I guess the last bit really, cause I think we've covered everything we wanted to go over was, and we sort of alluded on it already is sort of where's this going? You know, are we, what's the next step? Is it, is it new materials? Are we going to have, you know, something crazy like Emacs teeth on them and things like that? Or, you know, are we going to have some magic scanner that you somehow pop in and do all sorts of movements on and it works out? What do you think? Where are we going? I think where we're going, I no, think you're no going to see No more. top secret trade secrets. Don't, uh, yeah. don't give anything. <laughs> So there are some exciting <laughs> things coming for sure. Um, always. Um, but I think if you really just say, where are we going? I think, I think the emphasis is going to be on more really and truly creating the virtual patient, more face scanning, aligning to intraoral scans, bringing that into the design and really and truly as best as possible, creating a virtual patient to get that accuracy and predictability of, of what we do, whether it's a, conventional denture or an immediate denture i think that's going to be the next biggest thing i think the artificial intelligence you know from from the capability and ability of intraoral scanning with artificial intelligence but also on um with designing restorations i mean three shape launched this three shape automate which can spit out a single tooth crown design in 30 minutes so where is artificial intelligence going to continue to go splints bridges, mm. dentures. I think that's something you're going to see as the future. Um, I think what you're already seeing, you know, with the launch of some new nano ceramic printed materials, I think you're going to see, I think you're going to see some exciting things come from milling as well. Um, but I think you're going to see a lot of exciting things coming out of 3d printing. Um, and, and I really truly feel whomever can figure out a way to print the base and the teeth in the same print cycle with a perfect mark like Ivotion, basically the Ivotion printed denture, you know, I think will will be the winner. And I think if I was to say, where do I see the future for sure for dentures, it'd be someone being able to print the, the base and the teeth simultaneously or within one cycle per se. So is, is printing preferable to mills? In what and, sense? And, 
Well, it's, it seems like you say there, you say that the golden egg is going to be if you can print it with the bits there. So is that because you prefer printed to milled? Yeah, is it, no, is I, it faster? Prefer, is, it, is it more cost effective? I still prefer milling from, from the material <clears throat> science standpoint, the biocompatibility and the strength and mm -hmm. um, the long-term studies. But I think when you look at the future, right, we mm -hmm. look at where are we going to be in five years, I don't know where we're going to be with milled technology and maybe you'll still have that indication for specific indications, but I think, you know, you can't ignore how rapidly additive manufacturing is going. And um, I think we have to, we have to know that it's, it's, it is the future, but again, how many can you print at one time? You know, so when you look at milling, I can load eight Ivotion discs during the day and I can put eight in at night and I can produce 16 dentures that all I have to do is remove the supports and, do some characterization on it and polish it mm. or not even do any next go or anything and just go right to finishing the case. Right. So you have to really look at it. And I think, again, not every indication is for every patient, not every indication is for every lab and, or, or every case. So I think having all of those things in your armamentarium and, and deciding, you know, what you want to do for that specific patient. And, you know, of course, subtractive manufacturing, there is waste, in, in, in the materials. Um, that's, uh, where, that's Mike's question there. I, I mean, just he, saw he, that he, there. He, Yeah, he led with what and then left us hanging for about three minutes while he typed happens to the milling material. So yeah, what, what is the, is that all part, is it just through the machine it disappears down? down or? To the suction unit and you empty that out every day and clean it and just like the vacuums at the bench. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I think, um, and obviously the scanners are going to get better and better. As you say, the AI within that that's going to determine whether it's, you know, cheek, re refracting cheek on the other side or whether it's, uh, I think, whether as I think Mike, again, I think it was a mini conversation going on about what's our experiences and things. Um, I think the question there was, oh, when we get something functional, but as you say, we're not, we're not there. Um, the white chap would then ask, is there a difference in costs between the two types? I only just seen that. Sorry. Um, yeah. I'm assuming that's printing versus milled or yeah. So the, the difference, I think the cost was the difference I saw to the two types. So the monolithic one piece Ivotion denture is less costly than the two piece milling the, 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 the base and the teeth because you, you, number one, you have two discs, you have two milling cycles, you have to have bond material to bond that in and then going back into the machine for another. So you, you have three milling cycles, right? You're going to mill the base rough, you're going to mill the teeth rough, you're going to polymerize that together with PMMA material. And then mm -hmm. you're going to go for a third milling cycle to finalize the whole piece. Whereas this is one milling cycle and mm -hmm. the cost of this disc is less than these two. Um, so, yeah. But as you say, with the, with the two part, you're looking at maybe a more aesthetic. Much more aesthetic. Yeah. Uh, Mike says that's not what he's asking. Are you talking environmentally, Mike, from a COP26 point of view? Um, but no, I think, uh, I think that covers it. Pretty well. If we have any other questions, please do pop them in. Um, oh, Immy's just joined us. Sorry, Immy, no implants today, but uh, we're talking uh, digital dentures. If we've got any other questions, guys, please do throw them in. Um, I guess if people wanted to get started in digital dentures, how would you? Wh where's the starting point? Is it, you know, do everything conventionally and maybe start scanning some imps? Uh, is it, you know, like I, I've jumped in on a couple of immediates what, and is it by a trios and that, that we'll find out who you're working for. <laughs> no, I think in, in my opinion, I think the pathway into digital denture is, is actually with the reference denture. Mm -hmm. I think because you, you, you're going to take a good closed mouth functional final impression. You're going to, you know, there's scan strategies out there. Uh, I actually helped develop the scan strategy for the reference denture with, with trios. Um, you can see that on my Instagram page, there's a, a link to the blog or you can find it on, on, um, on the internet. It's through three shape. Um, mm -hmm. also on my online platform where we teach, you know, how to take a functional impression in a reference denture. But the, the reason I say a reference denture is the pathway into digital for, for as a clinician or, or a technician is, you know, you're going to be provided with all the information that you need, right? You're going to have the high smile line, the lip support, the midline, the tooth form, the everything there. And I think getting used to scanning something like that, 
doing a functional try and off something like that, you're going to be a lot closer with respect to your occlusal plane, your midline, your fit, your occlusion, you know, and really gain some confidence and a nice experience and a good working experience with the lab um, that you're working with to design these dentures and giving them all that information that, that they need and that they require. Yeah. I think as a, it, it, it makes sense. And uh, yeah, I'm going to have to, talk to the bosses about getting a trios in um because yeah it's certainly interesting i say it's and it's allowed uh i say for some of these immediate ones i mean this this uh bridge one this complete one that i'm i'm looking at you know it's nice and easy i scanned him at the consultation appointment and it's very much sort of you know even sort of i've done the scan it's a record and you know i'll send you the letter later about what it's going to be and if he doesn't do it i've done a scan i can chat to my technician about it we can plan and learn stuff but whatever but if he says yep great then i haven't got to bring him back in to do impressions and i can just say yep print it do it let's go so yeah it's definitely got its pros and cons i think we've stunned everyone into uh, into silence i don't know if we've got any questions there um obviously you said your online platform um you've got people around the world teaching wise so where do people find that if anyone's interested in in learning more of this new platform is it denture center it's, or is it's it something else yeah it's learn dot the denture center dot ca and then you'll see all types of courses we do hands-on courses as well here but all the online courses from like i said how to take an alginate impression how to take a centric tray uh intraoral scanning uh, reference dentures some cd gothic arch tracings it's all high quality 4k produced um, videos implant over denture workflows you know how to do a pickup intraorally all kinds of stuff bit of everything nice little lockdown projects and next next time someone comes into my dms asking that i'm just going to send the link to your <laughs> website so that's fine um perfect my man i think uh i think that's got us done i'll let you get off for the rest of your day because it's only what half four in the afternoon yeah, or something got, over there. Got, got patience <laughs> till eight tonight so till eight oh. yeah mondays and, and then, tuesdays mondays and then you're manning manning the mills at 8 30 to make there sure everything's go. going <laughs> perfect my man well thank you so much for this and thank, um thank you We'll keep in touch. Well, when, when I pop over to Canada, I'll uh, I'll come and drop by We'd and love uh, to check have it you. out. Love to have <laughs> it. Cheers, Eric. Thank you, man. Thanks. Cheers, have everybody. A great night. Thanks a lot. You too. Take care.